Okay, so in this module, you're given um, something in either slope-intercept form or point-slope form and to convert it to the other form. <coughs> that means that, like in this problem, uh, they want the answer in mx plus b format. Notice over here, they have something times x, that's m, plus something, that's the b value. m is your slope, b is your y-intercept, and we can find it here in slope, um, between point, in point-slope form. Right, so this is point slope or PS form, and we want to go to slope intercept or write SI form over here. So PS to SI, point slope to slope intercept. What do we do? Well, remember in point slope form that this number negative 2 is your slope. So that's the M value right here. And then you could find the Y intercept. How? Well, think about, um, well, I guess probably the best way to do that is to uh, rewrite this using algebra. I think that's my favorite way of doing it, so I'll show you that. If you have y plus 1, and then on the right side, negative 2 times x is negative 2x, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. To get a y equals mx plus p format, we simply have to isolate y by subtracting 1 on both sides. And look what happens. 1 minus 1 is 0, so just y is left. We have negative 2x, right, minus 3. So there's the negative 2, that's our slope, and here's negative 3 right here, that's a y-intercept right there, so plus negative 3. So really, we're going from point, point slope to slope intercept. It's probably easiest to recognize that this number out here is a slope, distribute it, and then either add or subtract from the side with the y variable on it to get it in an x plus b format. Let's say you have to reverse it. If you're given if you were given y equals negative 2x minus 3, and I said get this into point-slope format, that format, remember, is the difference of the y values, right? So y minus something equals m, your slope, times x minus something. Okay, so, so here, how can we do that? Well, here, right, the slope is still negative 2, so when you're rewriting it, you know the m value is negative 2. And then believe it or not, um, you just have to put plug in any point right into these two empty slots right here, any x and y value. So I'll put the x value here, x1 we'll call it, and y value, y1 there. How do you do that? Well, literally, just I pick a simple number for x. I'll pick 0. That will be our x value here. So we'll have m times x minus 0. And they have negative 2 times 0 minus 3. And this will tell you the y value when x is 0. So negative 2 times 0, that's 0, minus 3 is negative 3, and y is going to equal negative 3. Well, y equals negative 3 when x is 0. So here we can write y minus negative 3, or in this case, y plus 3, right? Subtracting so a negative is plus. So what just happened? Well, here, if you're given, right, if you're given something in mx plus b format, the m value will always go here. And then plug in a simple x value like 0 into your equation, plug in 0, see what happens for y. Now you might think this is wrong, right? Because it's different from the point slope formula that they gave us. That had plus 1 and plus 1. We have plus 3 and 0. Well, they're both correct because point slope form simply has a point in it, and a slope in it, excuse me, negative 2 at any point, right? You could read the point right here. That's what's so useful about it. You can tell a point in the slope immediately. All right, thanks.